Alright, welcome! So in this video, I'm going to introduce the idea of Riemann sums and do an example where we look at how they might be used to find area. So our motivation for using a Riemann sum is that we ultimately want to be able to find the area under any curve. So we want to be able to have a curve we're looking at and know the precise area under it. So to get there, we have to start by using an approximate process, and that process uses Riemann sums. It just so happens that that process happens to be quite useful in the real world. So often in real life situations, we only have experiments or testing to provide us with information, and the data we get is only for specific values. We don't have a continuous function that just tells us what's happening at any point in time or for any input. Instead, we just know that for certain inputs we get this output, and so we have discrete data. It's just individual points that we know. So this method uses individual points, and so it often gets used in real life situations to do a best approximate guess. Of course, in math, we want to do this theoretically and find the exact option, the most precise way to do this, but along the way we learn this really valuable tool of using a Riemann sum. So to show you what this looks like, let's create a process to estimate the following area. Specifically, I want to look at this parabola that is facing downward, and let's find a process to estimate the area. So if you wanted to know the area under this curve, one way to do it would be to basically just count the boxes. And the way we're going to count the boxes is by making rectangles. So we're going to make a bunch of rectangles that have certain heights that fill up this space. So you're going to see this isn't exactly the area, but we're approximating. We're doing our best to get the area. So here what I've done is taken at each point, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, I've taken the leftmost value and found the height of the function there. So at 0, the height was 0, at 1, the height was 5, 2, the height was 8, 3, the height was 9, etc. And I've used that as the height of a rectangle that I'm going to put in as a way to sort of fill up the space. Then what I want to do is find the areas of each of these individual rectangles and then add them up. So our rectangles have areas of 0, 5, 8, 9, 8, and 5. And I'm doing this because they have a width of 1 and a height of whatever value we've selected. So for example, the middlemost rectangle has a width of 1 and it has a height of 9. So 1 times 9 is 9, meaning that rectangle has area of 9. Then the total area is just the sum of these values, and so I'm getting 35 as my area. Now, even though this is an approximation, you can imagine that the parts we've gone over on the right-hand side might sort of fit in those other positions that we left empty. So this is an approximation, it's not perfect, but it's probably sort of close, especially since this is symmetric. Now, the way that I selected to do this first is called a left Riemann sum and it has six rectangles, even though that first rectangle had no area. So this is a left Riemann sum because for each sub-interval of width one, we chose the leftmost point for the height. So I chose zero through five as my heights rather than using the right sides of those intervals. So hopefully you can see the difference once we look at the right Riemann sum. So let's try that out. So here I'm going to take the right points of each of the intervals. So I'm starting at one and I'm finding that height and then two through six. And those points now become the height of my rectangles. Now this actually turns out to give the same thing for this particular example because it's symmetric. So we still have five, eight, nine, eight, and five as our rectangle areas. Oh, and that zero, that one counts too. When we sum them up, we get 35 again, but this is a right Riemann sum with six rectangles since it's using the right endpoints of each of the smaller intervals to find the height. Okay, so so far I chose a little sub interval of width one, and I was looking at rectangles of width one with height either determined by the left side or the right side of that little interval. But we could also find intervals and then use the midpoint of them. So let's say I wanna do some wider rectangles, let's say of width two, and we're gonna take the midpoints. So here the midpoints would be one, three, and five. And I'm gonna use those values as the height of my rectangles. So I have a rectangle that has width two, height five, that is an area of 10. Then I have one width two, height nine, that'd be an area of 18. And then I have another one of area 10. 
When I sum these up, I'm getting 38 as my area. And this is a midpoint Riemann sum that has three rectangles. So instead of using the right or the left hand side, I used the midpoint of these smaller intervals that have my width that I'm choosing. Okay, so this is just one way we approximate area. And this is especially useful, as I mentioned before, if we only know some information about a situation. So if I only knew certain points, I could use them for the points that determine the heights of each of my rectangles. But ultimately what we wanna do is to make this more accurate. So what we're going to do in integral calculus is to take more rectangles, and we're ultimately going to get an infinite number of rectangles. But you can see here, as we decrease the width, we get more rectangles to fill the space, and we're better approximating the area. The way we ultimately do this is by calling the width a dx, that's a really, really small width of a rectangle, and then the height is f of x, and it's determined by the point on the function. And what we do is we sum up all of these areas and get a really good approximation of the area under the curve. Ultimately, in order to find the exact area, we are going to make those widths infinitely small, but that's just a little foreshadowing for what we're going to do later. Okay, so that's the intro to Riemann sums. I also have a video where I describe the official sort of formal formulas for the right, left, and midpoint Riemann sums, and then I have an example that I do along with it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.